Hello, well in this film I thought I'd show you the little progress with the spinning wheel and my spinning. And I've got some which I've spun here, some wool. So this was Kent Romney wool. And I've got a bobbin here, this is single ply. So this is as it comes off when I've been spinning on the spinning wheel. And then what I do, I wind two of these single plies together to give like a two ply wool. And here's an example of a two ply. So I'm sort of getting there. It's a bit uneven when I look at it. Ideally you have it so it's nice and even throughout, but it's, it's getting there. And um, I've got a whole sort of hank of wool here that I've done. So what I actually do is I spin it a single ply. I then twin ply it on the wheel. So you, when you're spinning, I'll show you in a minute what I mean, you have your wheel turning like clockwise to get a single ply. Then what you do, you combine two single plies together to get a double ply and you turn the wheel in the opposite direction. So the twists are sort of working against each other. And what I then do is I, I wash the wool. So I put it into a hank like this tied up and I wash it in warm water and then in cold water and it sort of lets the wool set in its twist and it keeps to a nice sort of shape like that. And it does smell lovely as well. Smells like the nice natural outdoors and you've got some sort of oil on your fingers as you use it, it's very nice. So that will be ready. I'm going to do some weaving with this wool. Anyway, I'll show you a bit on the wheel and you'll see a bit more what I'm actually doing. So first of all, what I do is I tie on a bit of leader wool onto my bobbin and then I loop it through and I have to use this little hook to get it through the orifice of the spindle here. That hooks it through and that gives me a bit of woolen thread. I then just start treadling away a little bit just to get a bit of the wool wound onto the bobbin. And then when I have this loose end I can start adding more wool to it. So I'm using some roving here which is prepared wool it's all been carded and all the sort of bits of bracken and stuff taken out and cleaned up generally and it's a good place to start so it's definitely easier using this i then just pull out a bit and make it like a little v form and what you do basically is you pinch it with your hand you start spinning this hand supports the wool so my right hand is just supporting the wool and sort of helping to feed a little but not really. It's the main work's being done here where you pinch and draft as they call it. So I'll get the wheel spinning. That's now spinning. And what I want to do, it just sort of hooks in. And once it gets going, I'm then just pinching and pulling, pinch and pull. And I'm making a thread of wool. So my right hand is really just supporting the roving wool and my left hand is pulling and sort of pinching and releasing and if you sort of have a little bit of like V shape in your wool in your clump of wool in your right hand it helps to sort of gauge how thick the thread is that you're actually spinning so I'm just literally pulling it with a pinch then releasing and it twists so the wheel is essentially putting twist on the wool so that's the sort of principle of the spinning wheel and it's amazing how with a little bit of practice I've not been doing this long you can get yourself a nice bit of woolen thread so this is a single ply thread of wool and it is like the wool I think it under the microscope it has got little hooks on it but it sort of grips well so I just pull it with a pinch and then release my pinch pull and release and as you release the pinch it actually forms the twist on the thread and you get your nice strand of wool so that's with the wheel going clockwise if I now wanted to ply 
two strands of wool together. I'd put them on my lazy kate and I'd feed it onto the bobbin with the wheel going and twisting in the opposite direction. So as you can see, I've got the little wheel working. It took quite a lot to sort it out, but it's now going quite happily. A friend has given me some flax. Now flax um, is from a natural plant, the flax plant, and you'll find films on YouTube about how they can grow flax and make linen thread from it. I thought I'd have a go uh, just spinning a bit of flax on this and just see what happens. So I'll stop what I'm doing here. That just shows you the, vaguely the principle of the spinning. I made this distaff on my pole lathe, so I'm going to tie some flax to it, mount it in the traditional distaff holder on the wheel. So this is the traditional distaff holder. I'll mount it on there and then the idea is you pull it off and you feed it in. I've never done it, but I thought it'd be quite good fun to try a bit of flax. So flax, again, you make a fine sort of thread and you can then weave with it to make linen. But you can see my little woolen there, it's not bad, all works. So I've been enjoying this. It's interesting trying to get the right amount of twist. It takes a little bit of practice and a bit of experimentation, but I think I've sort of more or less got it there. It's fairly even and get the odd breakage and you have to go back and then obviously retwist in some more wool. So this is what the flax looks like. And there's actually a very good film on YouTube of some people at a heritage museum in Ireland growing flax plants and then processing it to get this, the raw flax material ready for spinning. So I'll try some of this. It feels quite coarse. It feels like coarse human hair. And in a way, it even looks a bit like human hair. But we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. Well, here goes. Um, I've been told with flax, the wheel should go in the opposite direction. So I'm doing it anti-clockwise. I've wound this leader thread on anti-clockwise. And I'm going to just try joining in the same way as I did with the wool and see what happens. So. This is weird going to the opposite way now. <laughs> All right, get the wheel running. Don't know how well this is going to work. But I'll try the same sort of principle of loosely holding it in one hand and then trying to do a pinch and a draw with the other. So pinching it, letting it slide back. Yeah, I think I'm getting it rather crude at the moment. I'll get myself started. I can see this, <laughs> it's quite interesting. It's another little bit of learning. I'm doing, I'm releasing my pinches far too early. I'm sorry if you've done a lot of spinning and you're looking at this and thinking, oh dear, this is all very wrong. It's obviously too much twist. It feels quite strong. You can see why linen cloth is actually quite strong. The idea is you're supposed to properly load up your distaff. I've only got it loosely tied on, but there's ways of dressing distaffs, um, which I don't pretend to be an expert or know about properly. But um, And then you just literally pluck it off and you spin it through. It maybe I need to adjust, now on this machine I can adjust the tension, and it maybe I need to take it up very slightly. So anyway, that's me in spinning at the moment. Well, I'm apt. A lot more to learn, a lot more to do. I have also got a little tiny table loom coming at some point. It's a very old one, it needs quite a lot of repair work on it. So it needs new heddles and a new beater. <laughs> but you can see I'm getting into some of this and quite enjoying it. So yeah, four um, shaft loom coming along that's so microscopic you can sort of fit it on a desktop quite happily. Anyway, I'll see you in the next film, probably be some leather craft or woodwork, but I'll keep going with the spinning and at some point I'll pop another film up of where I'm at. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. Bye then.